Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today I want to talk about the importance of having boundaries in a relationship, right? So why is it important to have boundaries in, and specifically we're going to discuss romantic relationships or when you're starting to date, right? So you're dating with the hope of this turning into a romantic relationship and it's wise that you have boundaries so we're going to talk about those boundaries and then we're also going to talk about why it's important to maintain those boundaries right why it's absolutely critical that you maintain those boundaries so we'll do those two things today now first of all you want to have boundaries because it helps to establish a healthy relationship right so from the onset you're helping to establish a healthy relationship and one good way to do that obviously is to be able to set those boundaries now there are different types of boundaries that you would have in place for different things but overall you're doing this so that it can help you establish a healthy relationship so what are some boundaries that you should probably set in your relationship well the first one is needs what are you looking for in a relationship what are you currently looking for now I would add, you know I want to tell you up front that if you perhaps approach someone early on uh, in the relationship in the first week or two and you start telling them you're looking for marriage or whatever the case is you might probably scare them off right just to be honest with you but at some point you have to decide that you're going to let this person know that what you're looking for is something serious. Now, you don't have to say you're looking for marriage from the onset, but you should let the person know that you're looking for something serious. Right there, it already sets a boundary in terms of what might be some of the expectations moving forward in terms of what are you both looking for, right? So what are your needs, right? Tell them, let the person know what you're looking for in a relationship. All right, the other thing that usually, this is kind of interesting because you, number two is really interesting because you have to spend time with someone to be able to get to know them, to decide whether or not you want to spend more time with them or you don't want to get to know them anymore. And that's a completely separate video I'm going to do all by itself uh, because there's a theory I want to talk about and, and kind of how that works. So, but number two is you want to talk about your desire for space and time. Like, yes, you want to spend time with this person, but how much time you want to spend with them. And your desire to have some space, right? And, you know, that's kind of like who you are. Which leads into the next thing, your individuality. Number three, right? You are an individual. I think it's important that you maintain your individuality in a relationship. Yes, obviously, the relationship becomes about the both of you. It becomes a we thing. But at the same time, each person has things that they like to do. And you should maintain those things. You should keep doing those things. Once they are perhaps falling in line with where you want the relationship to go. Uh, so let's say, for example, you love going out to the club or whatever the case is. And, and, and that's happening in the early part of the relationship. Maybe on as you get more serious, you might have to have that type of discussion with someone um, because at a certain point in your relationship, that clubbing thing might not be what both people are looking for at the same time. Someone might think maybe this is something you should revisit. But that's a conversation for later on, right? But there are other areas in your life where you would want to maintain individuality, right? It's Yes, it's two people coming together, but you're still an individual. You still can do your own thing, all right? To a certain extent, all right? All right, the next thing is friendships, and this usually causes a lot of drama. Number four is friendships. Well, keep in mind that I might not like your friends, and you might not like all of my friends, right? That's kind of how I look at that. But out of respect, someone should understand why certain people are important to you, why it's important that you have certain people in your life. This could really lead to a tricky conversation because it really does depend, obviously, on the kinds of friends that you have. But you have, you have to be able to have that discussion again with someone, right? And maybe they don't like one of your friends, but this may be someone who's always been there for you. And so you always have to have these discussions, which is why communication is the key as you're going about this and you're setting these boundaries and all that type of stuff. And it's the same way. You might not like all of their friends either, but they're not going to drop all of their friends 
or a particular person or whatever the case is because you know there and this could cause a lot of chaos in a relationship but a lot of times what happens is it's not discussed beforehand and it's not discussed until it becomes a huge problem so you might have to set boundaries when it comes to friendships right it's difficult to do but it's something you're gonna have to do all right so number uh, five is money you know a lot of people in relationships uh, have decided to especially people who've been in relationships for a while have decided that the best thing to do is to have separate bank accounts right one of the best things to do is to have separate bank accounts I am all for that everybody works for their own money everyone should be able to spend their own money they want to be the way they want to 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 do so uh, they should be able to do it spend the money spend their money the way they want to spend their money uh, and then you could pool some of your resources together to be able to take care of certain types of bills or whatever the case is but I firmly believe that everyone's money belongs to them all right and if someone works hard for their money it should be up to them to be able to enjoy uh, how they want to spend their money once Again, it's, I guess, within healthy reasons, right? Some healthy uh, guidelines and boundaries in terms of if you're growing with this person uh, and they're not holding you back because of the, their spending habits or something like that. But that's something else that needs to be discussed. All right. All right. So the next one would be sexual expectations. Hmm. Right. Sexual expectations. So this basically is what are someone's sexual boundaries, right? what is someone willing to do or not willing to do uh, and this is another one just like when you're talking about family and and all that type of stuff and friends that could cause a lot of drama right uh, and could because sometimes what happens is some people are very open to having different types of sexual experiences or you know, um, in, incorporating different types of sexual objects into their relationship, whether it's toys or this or whatever the case is. And some people are very close-minded to that sort of stuff. They're more traditional in their approach towards sex, and they don't share the same type of sexual fantasies as their partner. And this is why a lot of people end up in counseling, sexual uh, sexual counseling as far as their relationship is concerned and they have to be able to work on these things to improve their relationship so that's something else that I would think that you definitely would want to talk about what are your sexual habits and what do you like to do and not to do and again it's about communication it's about you getting together at some point when you both realize you know this needs to be discussed so that you don't have the discussion after the relationship is in trouble this is something that you talk about ahead of time all right the final thing is family right and so again as in friendships not everybody is going to like your family right everyone is not going to like your family members uh, and you're not always going to like other people's family members, but there is a line of respect that must be maintained, right? So you might not be fond of someone's mom or dad or brother or sister or whatever the case is, but you must respect them. And you must do so in such a way that shows that you, because I respect the person I'm dating, I respect the fact that this is their parent, this is their sibling, whatever the case is. You have to respect them because hey it's their brother it's their sister it's their mom it's their dad it's their, they come as part of the package and so you might not be fond of them no one's saying you gotta go bowling with them or play tennis or golf or walking or at the beach with them or whatever the case is but you must respect the person right because they are family as well uh, and that's just something that is going to be expected of you and it's a vice versa thing now those are some boundaries that you should set but let me tell you one of the mistakes that people make. A lot of times we move those boundaries back when we really like someone and we feel like we're going to lose this person if we don't move the boundaries back. So you don't really like doing certain type of sexual things, but you're only doing it because you feel like the person might leave you because of so, so, and so. You don't like the way they talk to your mom or your dad or your brother or your sister but you tolerate it and you say nothing because you don't want them to leave you or whatever the case is right and then you could pick anything you let them violate your space your time your individuality your your needs what you're looking for in a relationship you let them violate that for whatever reason right because 
you don't want to lose them. So you let someone trample over all of your boundaries. You move your boundaries, they start here, and you move them back. You move them back, you move them back, you move them back, because you feel like this is what you got to do to keep this person, to trap this person, to whatever the case is. The problem is there's going to come a time when it's just become overbearing, and you're going to want to move. Sometimes what some people do is they just decide to move those boundaries back to originally where they were because they moved them because they really didn't want the person to leave or whatever. And now you're trying to reestablish boundaries, and that's a difficult thing to do. That's when you hear people say, well, you're switching up on me. Well, this is what you encouraged early on. All right, why are you changing on me? And it's the truth, you are. Because you, you allowed people to do and say things to you that you said you would never allow people to do and say to you. And now, after you have had enough, you're trying to reestablish those boundaries, yet still keep the relationship. But remember, that person is with you because you allow them to do and say certain things and maybe they always got away with it. But no, you want to change that and you want to reestablish those boundaries. It might be too late. And that's when a lot of relationships end up in chaos. And that's why you got to maintain those boundaries from early on. No, it's a difference between compromising and lowering your standard, right? There's a whole big difference between compromising and lowering your standards. But it's one thing also when you change your boundaries to encourage somebody to do something and you're trying to change them back because you don't like them anymore. And people are going to say, well, hey, you used to do so, so, and so, and we used to do so, so. And then you get into this big argument. They tell you you're not the same as you used to be. What are you doing? But blah, blah, blah. The relationship ends a lot of times. I've seen a lot of relationships end like this. I've worked with a lot of people whose relationships have ended like that. So you, if you're going to set a standard, you've got to maintain that standard. Don't be moving that standard and that boundary all over the place just to get someone to like you. Because when they get in there, remember, you encourage them to come in a certain way. They expect that you're going to maintain that certain way while they're there. And if you don't, a lot of times they're going to move away from you, right? So if you keep your boundaries, it's one way to help filter out people who are not supposed to be in your life in the first place. You maintain those boundaries and it acts as a safeguard to filter out people who are not supposed to be in your life in the first place so let me know what you think right what are some other boundaries that you feel should be set in relationships and why you think it's important to set boundaries in relationships please don't forget to subscribe and turn on your post notifications please share the videos on whether it's your instagram or your facebook or whatever the case is as i'm working on growing the channel and continuing to bring content your way please also don't forget to hit the like button and until next time, peace.